hello good evening so i'll be presenting about kickstart and as so mentioned kickstart is a utility for automatically installing ubuntu without manual intervention in many machines simultaneously so um, basically the motivation as we already mentioned it is to install ubuntu in linux in multiple machines which we otherwise have to run around with the cds or usbs and we'll have to repeat the same set of package installations and configurations for multiple machines like common packages some uh, firefox and chrome thunderbird some some applications will be installed on all the machines in the lab flash player or like like that so uh, we can actually configure this system to install all those applications along with it and then we can install simultaneously so for this what we require is a central system which has a dhcp server a tftp server an apache server and we'll need a utility called system config kickstart so uh, i'll i'll tell what each of the servers are required for so the procedure is first we have to create the central system so for that we need to do the manual job we will have to give the host name ip configurations and all like we usually do for a single system and we have to install the previously mentioned packages which is apache and uh, tftp and the other server packages and after that we have to create a kickstart configuration file using the system config kickstart utility so after this we have created a script here you just have to manipulate the values of certain variables in that script and then if you run that script on the newly installed system then then it will actually install all these server packages and it will create the configurations required so after this presentation i'll uh, run you through the script what it does and from at your end you have to install an ubuntu system run the script with the appropriate variable uh, set so this procedures will be done by that script now yeah so these are the typical variables that we will have to manipulate in that script the dhcp list ranges the certain kickstart configurations and the like and there are certain things in addition to this which we can do along with this that is so in the kickstart configuration file which i'll show there is a uh, post installation phase where we can actually specify the post installation common installations and configurations so creation of rsa key pair is also a very handy tool you can ssh into machines without having to enter the username and password every time an ntp server will actually help you to keep all the systems have a same time which is actually required for the puppet utility which will be presented later by renchit so basically this is what we are well what we will be doing after the deployment server is set up once the deployment server is set up connect the new machine into the network turn it on press f12 which will boot it into the network and then it will automatically start installation you can sit back and relax you do this on as many machines as you want to install and it will do the installation parallelly without any manual intervention so now i'll show you the demo so uh, these are certain references from which i have uh, made the script and you can go into this to enhance the script further and make more uh, features into the script so it, it's fa fairly detailed documentation in the references to the demo part so this utility that we see here is the system config kickstart utility which we can install on the linux system the central system and once you start the utility you can actually give in the user options that you will be otherwise asked during the installation the keyboard layout the time zone the installation mode so for this installation method you will have to select http and the http server should be the uh, it should point to the ip of our deployment server that we are creating we should assign a static ip to the deployment server the bootloader configuration where you want to install the bootloader how do you want to partition so you can create the partition table for the systems that is going to be automatically deployed 
and the network configuration firewall. So, these are all the questions that you would otherwise be asked if you are installing manually. Now, this post installation script phase is significant. Now, here you can actually specify the scripts and commands that you would run on all the machines commonly. So, say if you want to install flash plugin, then you can add apt get install flash flash plugin installer. So, this will actually ensure that on all the machines after the installation, this commands are also done. Now, uh, I will show you the script and I will run you through the script. So, uh, this is what I earlier mentioned. So, usually if we have not configured RSA key pair, then you would have to give the username and password when you SSH to a machine. So, this is script. Uh, the initial variables are for assigning an IP to the deployment server and uh, the network that you would be having in the lab, the subnet mask, the broadcast. So, the router IP is the, so uh, the initial variables, the first part until here, until here is, are the variables. Now, uh, the initial variables are all for the network setup and if you have a domain name, then you can set the domain name there. Now, the TFTP root is a standard location where the uh, boot files are supposed to be kept. You do not have to change it usually. And then the DHCP ranges, this is something that you might want to change. If the network is changing, then you will have to change this as well according to it. Now, the no nodes will be named node 1, node 2, node 3, etc. So, if you want some other naming and starting number, then you can change these numbers here. And then this is the uh, ISO file. So, you have to specify one uh, Linux ISO file here, which will be downloaded when you run the script and it will be extracted into the appropriate location, so that the deployment server is set up. And the kickstart file is the file that you would generate using the previous tool that I showed. You have to save the output of that utility to a location in the server and uh, the path to that HTTP location you have to put in this file. And so, this script has to be run as root and that is and then, so this part of the script will actually assign static IP for the deployment server itself. And then, this part will install an open SSH server, so that we can SSH to the deployment server. So, this part will install the TFTP server, the TFTP server is actually the uh, the server which serves the files over network when the other system boots into the network. Now, sys Linux is the bootloader which will enable the other systems to boot into the network. DHCP server is the one which assigns IP when the system boots into the network. So, uh, it is actually reverse. So, when after deployment server is set up, when we boot into the network from another machine using F12, it will first go to DHCP server and get an IP and then it will get the bootloader and from the bootloader it will uh, further get into the TFTP server, it will get the further next files and then it will proceed with the installation. And during the installation, it will also download the kickstart file which will um, proceed the installation without any user intervention. So, these are configurations required for the DHCP server. You would not have to change anything here usually you will have to set the variables on the top and then these things should do the things on its own. And the web server is installed by the LAMP server, it will install the uh, Apache server which is required to um, uh, publish the kickstart file and the other installation files. Wake online is another very useful utility that we can use. We can turn on the power down machines using the central server when we, if we have the MAC address of those systems. Now, this part will 
uh, download the Linux ISO that we specified and it will uh, extract the contents of the CD, the ISO file into the appropriate locations and it will also configure, it will also add the kickstart file into the options. So the script is this much only. So in your lab, what you have to do is you have to first set up a machine uh, using Ubuntu the normal way and then you have to appropriately configure the values in this script and run the script. So after running the script, you can start other machines from the network. So how that works, I will show you using a virtual machine. This is what you have to show. Yeah, so uh, it's nothing. Basically, since I don't have a physical machine which I can turn on and press F12, I'm creating a virtual machine which will boot into the lin uh, network. So, So this machine, the installation will happen through the network. So the option that I've specified here is network boot. That's how the machine should be installed. And then I'm going to the next. Though as type and all is generic. I'm giving some RAM and some CPU, some storage space, and so uh, the machine. So this is as good as an example of connecting a machine into the network and starting it. So now, this is what would happen after you run the deployment server script. It will boot into the network and it will, so now you can see it uh, downloaded the bootloader from the TFTP server and then it will show this option uh, asking whether you want to install or something else and then this option you can avoid actually, this, uh, this menu you can skip. So once you enter install, it will start the installation. Now onwards you do not have to intervene, it will automatically install until the rest. And the post, whatever is there in the post also will be installed. You can, afterwards, uh, during the post phase you can actually configure the SSH key pair which will allow you to SSH without having to enter the password. Yeah, so this is pretty much how the kickstart works. The script will be uploaded in the Moodle which you can use. It will be easier for you to use the script. And there are a lot of, there is a lot of room to improve. You can use the references to enhance the script especially the automatic node deployment script is very handy. It, it actually detects the new systems and assigns an IP. So you have kind of more control on the new systems that's going to be installed. Now I hand over to uh, Ranjit and Neeraj for the puppet demo and presentation. Good evening. So once, as Arun explained, uh, once the systems are loaded with the OS, the next thing that we need to do is uh, install all the softwares on them so that they can be up and ready for the lab use. So different labs require different softwares, uh, different configurations. So we can achieve all these through uh, something known as a puppet configuration system. So in this part, we'll see uh, how do you exactly do all these things. Uh, and how do we simplify all these tasks? So uh, first is puppet configuration management. So the things that we'll cover is what exactly is puppet? How do we set up the puppet master and puppet client? Uh, how we exactly manage labs using puppet? That is uh, to do all these daily tasks of installing softwares in puppet clients, adding users, 
copying files, checking file permissions and existences, and removing softwares. So, so to start with, what exactly is Puppet? Okay, so Puppet is a system which is developed by Puppet Labs to centralize and standardize configuration and administration of uh, our systems. So, as we can see in the diagram here, uh, the Puppet, uh, we have a Puppet Master. Uh, so, one, there is a system which is configured uh, to have the Puppet Master running on it. And uh, all the other hosts that we can see are what are called as the Puppet Clients. So in here in IITB, we have a puppet.csc.iitb.ac.in, a Puppet Master Server. And all the lab machines, that is the new software lab and the old software lab machines, are the ones which are the Puppet Clients. So what does Puppet let you do? It lets you perform normal system administration tasks that we just discussed, that is adding users, installing packages, managing the user accounts, and all such things on these uh, clients. So uh, we'll start with how, so here we'll give a step-by-step -step demo of uh, how we exactly set up the Puppet Master, and then how we set up the Puppet clients. So the Puppet Master is a, as I said, is a single uh, system uh, which, uh, which administers all these Puppet clients, and the Puppet clients are all your lab machines which need all these softwares to be installed on them. So we'll start with the puppet ma with the configuration and setting up of these puppet master and clients. Uh, hi, I'm Ranjit Kumar, working as a system administrator. Uh, so uh, here we go with the configuration of puppet master and puppet client. Um, I just taken two machines, two virtual machine. Uh, one is puppet master and one is puppet client. So this is puppet master and second one is puppet client. Uh, so first we'll uh, and uh, I'm using uh, Ubuntu 10.04 for this demonstration. So here we'll start uh, with Puppet Master. Uh, so first we need to install the uh, Puppet and Puppet Master package in uh, server. So as it is Ubuntu, we need to use apt-get command to install. apt-get install Puppet and Puppet Master. So it will ask to continue, yes, give yes. So uh, now I am doing all those uh, settings in Puppet Master. So now it is installed. The main configuration uh, directory for Puppet is slash etc Puppet. So in that manifest on directory is there. So here we need to uh, add on file site.ppp. So in that site.ppp we need to add nodes, that is Puppet agents. So as you saw in the diagram, there are a lot of puppet agents, that is a lab machines. So right now I'm adding this puppet agent, one puppet agent, this puppet line dot csc dot ac, csc dot itb dot ac in. So this is the syntax to add uh, puppet agents in puppet master. So after that, we need to go to slash etc default puppet. So in that we need to, so in that start we have to give yes instead of no. So while booting the puppet service will start if you give this. And after that we need to restart the puppet master service slash etc slash need dot d puppet master restart. So now puppet client is added in this master. So now we will switch to puppet client. So here we need to install only puppet. And then that main configuration directory slash etc puppet. So in that uh, you need to create one file puppet.conf. So I, ha I have already template in my home directory. I am just copying that puppet.conf to this directory. So in that puppet.conf, you need to give server IP. So that is our server is puppet-master.csc.itv.ac.in. So after this, like I said in uh, default puppet, we have to give yes. to start puppet service in the boot time. Uh, 
and here I am restarting puppet service. So, now the configuration in client side is over. So, now we have to uh, request, I mean from the client side we have to send request to puppet master uh, for the certificate. So, after the certificate only this puppet client and master able to communicate with each other. So, for uh, sending that uh, request this is the command to send the request puppet d hyphen hyphen server that server ip or host name hyphen hyphen test. So, now uh, the request is went to server. So, in the server we need to check whether any uh, request is came or not by puppet ci hyphen hyphen list. So, it shows puppet hyphen client dot csc is sending request. So, from here we need to sign that certificate by using this command puppet ca hyphen hyphen sign puppet hyphen client dot csc dot in. So, after this now both puppet master and client will be able to communicate each other. So, now what exactly is this puppet thing? So, what uh, so while communicating uh, while having the communication between the puppet master and the puppet client. So, what uh, exactly happens is both need to verify that uh, the puppet clients need, needs to verify that it is talking to the correct puppet master and the master needs to verify that it is the proper client. So, so generally this thing is done via certification authority. So, but uh, in order to manage the certificates for all these uh, different clients. So, suppose in your lab you have around 200 machines or something like that. So, then it will be very difficult to get certificates for uh, externally uh, signed certificates for all these machines. So, what puppet does is by default the puppet master is configured uh, to have a pu puppet certification authority. So, by default it has its own uh, certification authority uh, and it uh, issues and signs certificates. So, every client uh, by default uh, contacts the puppet master for a puppet certificate which the uh, puppet certificate uh, master then sees in its list and then it signs as was explained. So, so then once this is done the client and the master are now free to communicate uh, for future purposes. So, so now yeah. this uh, puppet master and client environment is set up I mean uh, so so we have to, I mean so uh, from here if you want to install any software in the client machine you just update uh, the software list in puppet master then the puppet client will communicate to master and it installs by by using the puppet. So for updating actually there is one file site.ppp so this site so here are the list of softwares for this dbms workshop so open jdk iphone 6 jdk postgres sql pg admin 3 and vim editor so i mean so this will uh, install so this is the format so uh, this we need to add in the server and uh, of, and for checking the service whether it is running or not uh, there is a service type. So, this is the uh, format for service type and uh, so if you want to add users there is a user type called. So, this is the format for user and you can execute Linux command by using exec type. So, these are the command I am executing wget, wget is used for downloading the softwares. So, here after creating the users this uh, this function will it will download the softwares and uh, I mean copy to its home directory dbb workshop home directory. Yeah. And so, all these things that is uh, configuration uh, that is ensuring that the packages are installed and uh, executing Linux commands ensuring that a particular uh, user is present. So, all these things can be done uh, using these blocks. So, we need to add all these things in the manifest uh, folder, the site.pp uh, file in the manifest folder. So, uh, what this does is, so in order to ensure that a particular uh, user is present, the, uh, so we just uh, write that ensure present and manage home is true. So, this will set up uh, the home directory for that particular user uh, named as dbb workshop and it will ensure that uh, that 
particular user is present on that particular machine. So uh, the next is exec. Uh, so we can execute our own custom commands, which are not provided by Puppet. So how we do this, that is the format for this is mentioned here. So we we go uh, in the CWD. We change. We uh, mention what directory we need to be in in order to execute the command. Then we specify what command we exactly need to execute. So here there is just a single command that is the wget. So here we can have a list of commands followed by uh, a semicolon. So uh, effectively, we, what we can do is we can write uh, bash scripts here, uh, and uh, then the path so the path is the here it will check since the puppet does not uh, have uh, its own place to check where to search for this command so in the so whatever we have mentioned in the path so it will check in all these places uh, for all these commands so uh, it will check for wget in user uh, slash user slash bin if it doesn't find here it will check it in slash user slash has bin so whatever commands we write we need to just specify the path for all these uh, commands so where we can expect to uh, find these commands and the next thing is only if so only if is we can put restrictions on when to execute these commands and when not to execute these commands. So uh, here we do the test hyphen uh, test uh, exclamation hyphen e. So this is if uh, if this uh, software dot tar dot gz file uh, file is not present in the home slash dbb workshop, only then this command will be executed. So like that we can have our own custom restrictions on uh, uh, depending on the situation on when we want these things to be executed and when we do not want them to be executed. So uh, in the original one we are where we have this package ensure installed. So here uh, the puppet will just uh, check that uh, uh, the default uh, installation method for that operating system. Uh, for Ubuntu it is apt-get, so it will just do apt-get install in order to install this Postgres SQL. So if we want custom installations, that is installation from source files and all, then we can use this exe blocks and specify the whole uh, installation method here in these commands. And uh, that is how we can go about uh, doing installations, both custom as well as uh, standard installation methods. And the next thing is to ensure that uh, particular files are present, particular directories are present uh, to ensure the file permissions, uh, the owners and the group uh, for these files. So this is how we do it. Uh, we Initially we write the name of the uh, file. Uh, we ensure that uh, it's a directory or a file. Uh, then we specify the owner, the group and then the file permissions for that particular file. The next is to, if you want to remove certain softwares which you have already installed. So uh, we can do is uh, if it's a custom installed software, then we can just write uh, it as a package. We write the name of the package and we just write it as ensure absent. So for Ubuntu, it will do uh, apt get apt get purge remove uh, pg admin three. Uh, if it's not, a, if you do not want to remove it uh, by the standard method, uh, we can write our own. Uh, scripts uh, using the exe block in the same way that we uh, wrote it to ensure that the software was installed. So uh, next thing is the, uh, we so we'll demo. just have a demo of how these things go on. Uh, so I have already uh, the site.ppp with me. So I'm just copying this site.ppp to slash etc puppet manifest folder. So that is the main configuration folder. So. Uh, so in this site.ppp we added all the softwares to be installed and service to be checked and users to be added uh, and node and here I node added as puppet hyphen client.cse.itb.ac.in. So here we will see that initially in the puppet client all these things were not installed. Uh, yeah. The file was not present and now once we execute this puppet hyphen puppet d hyphen hyphen test all these uh, it will contact the puppet master to check what changes it uh, needs to be what changes are, uh, are to be done in itself and then it will execute all those commands and get all these files installed by itself see if you uh, yeah so we PG see that pg admin 3 is not and, installed here and vim is not installed and id dbp or dbp dbp so this there's no dbp workshop there's no user called as dbp, DBP workshop, workshop here so after running this puppet hyphen hyphen test, puppet D, puppet D hyphen hyphen test, this client will communicate with server and it will install all the packages 
and it will install, create the users and copy that files in users home directory. See, so it is, uh, it mentions all the changes that it has done. Uh, so what exactly it needs to do uh, from its previous version? It will take some one minute to uh, install all those package and uh, by default this puppet di -fn -fn test run by uh, in every 30 minutes. So if you want to reduce the time, uh, reduce the minutes, you want to uh, add it in the puppet.con file. See if you see the output, you can see that uh, PostgreSQL is present, it is installing and dbp workshop it is created. So now if you do dbp workshop, see the user is, the user got created and if you log into the user, then you will see the software.tada.gz file and Vim also created. So Vim as you know it is test editor used for, uh, used in Linux. So we will go to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, this is all about uh, how we can use Puppet to do our daily tasks. And the next thing is uh, what other things we can uh, what other things we do in the in our Linux system administration. So the first thing is uh, for in order to do uh, in order to perform this daily tasks. So we need to have a basic overview of our basic of our Linux commands and then some uh, idea of bash scripting. So we'll uh, go to our first basic Linux commands. Yeah. So, so persons who are already familiar with this will already be familiar with, with some of these commands or most of these commands. So for those who are not familiar with these commands, we'll just explain, of, explain uh, what each of these commands do. So ls, ls it will list all files and directories in the current directory and there are lot of i mean the so um, each of these commands uh, have lot of options with uh, them so we can just use the man, man page, page uh, which is mentioned here so we'll just show one man page so, so we just need to LS. type man and the command name so so we'll here you'll find the detailed detailed uh, description, of, description of all of these commands so there are lot of option you can go and read and you see, and uh, next PWD, PWD is, is used for uh, find the present working directory, current working directory and CD, CD is change directory. So right now you are in uh, CD, I mean slash home CZ, if you want to go desktop then CD desktop. So uh, CD can be done using uh, specifying the relative path or using the absolute path. So this was yeah. how we did using the relative Relate. path. And then so we'll if do you want using to absolute path. Absolute then path. So then home slash home CSR, slash the entire CSR. path we can specify. So this is known as absolute path, and uh, touch touch command is used for creating a file, empty file. Touch I am. So if you see here, test file is there. So here, and mkdr is used for creating directories. Test two, and cat is used for uh, to view the contents of the file. See, I am cat. So before that, I will edit. So VI is the test text editor. I am just opening VI and just so now we will use cat cat text. It will print to the contents. And next CP, CP is the copy command, you need uh, the format is CP and then source, source and destination where you want to copy. So if you want to copy to desktop and you want to use like this, desktop. So dot specifies the current directory and dot dot uh, specifies the, the parent, parent, uh, parent, parent directory. And next move, move test, test to. Test three. 
So, move also uh, rename, so it is used for rename also and grep, grep command is used for searching certain patterns in a file. So, I am just searching hello in text test file, test 3, see because we mentioned capital H. So, if you want to ignore the case sensitive, you want to use hyphen i and uh, find, find command is used to uh, find, find the a specific <laughs> file files in, there. in a certain directories. directories. As time is over, so I am just go through very fast. So, locate also uh, used for uh, uh, searching the files in the entire uh, root directory and user add is used for uh, so just go to slide. Slide. So, user add is used for creating the users and user mod is used for modifying an any settings for the users and user del it is used for de deleting the users and by ps stop kill you can find the process id and kill the process and uh, man command as as we said earlier it is used for uh, uh, find the description of the command and also you can use ls like command hyphen hyphen help it also does the same thing and, and then we have SSH, SSH and, and SCP. SCP. So, SSH is used for remote login and SCP for copying files on all these uh, on co all these remote machines. So, you can copy from a particular uh, directory uh, from a particular machine to other remote machines or copy from other remote machines to your particular machine using SCP. So, the next thing is use of, use of bash scripting. So, prior to the uh, use of Puppet, uh, we used to manage all our daily tasks like uh, w whatever we mentioned before that is creation of users, ensuring soft installation of softwares on all these machines using bash scripts. So now we, what we use them for is to manage lab exams. So how do we do that? So uh, what all can be done? So basically you can accomplish everything using bash. So as you get uh, more and more familiar with that, you will learn how to uh, uh, do certain tasks. So what we do, what we can, what we do here is, so during lab exams, uh, we use them for disabling, for first we uh, disable the internet and LAN on all the lab machines uh, on where the students are seated. Then we enable the local logins uh, which are given to all the students at the start and uh, we disable them uh, at the end of the exam so that all the students are logged out uh, at the same time. The next is copying the question papers on the desktop for all these students and all the relevant data uh, like some professors would want the students to have certain data uh, available for their exams. So all these can be accomplished using bash scripts. At the end of the exam, we can retrieve the students' answers and then we can send them uh, to the TAs and the professors for checking the, those answers. And then we enable the internet and LAN disabled on all these machines uh, after the exams are over. So we'll have some script, so we'll just show some sample scripts with which we did, uh, which we do all these things. So these are the sample scripts. So first, uh, disable the entire network. So this is the simple uh, bash script. So these are the some IP tables command to run uh, to block certain port number. So you, uh, you can see this. Uh, it is blocking 5022, and it is blocking uh, 22 port number. 22 port number is for uh, SSH. Like that, you can block any port number. and next one is enable login so that is unlock login so password hyphen u command is used for unlock the logins and the next is the after that is the name of the account that we want to unlock yeah lock so this is the script for uh, locking the user's account that is logging them out after the exams are over and Put data. Yeah. Put data. So, uh, so, so during the exams, that students need some data for reference and uh, the question, the question paper. papers. So, we need to put by all uh, all these things. Are we are uh, creating own script and this script will do all those things. 
and and last is enable the network. So, after the examination is over, we, so we need to enable the network. So, by using this IP table siphon F, we just flush, flush all, all the, the rules we written earlier. So, the next thing is uh, we can also find out uh, problems. So, log files are very good, uh, uh, keep a track of all the problems that are uh, Phase, uh, uh, keep a track of all the things that happen uh, when particular processes execute. So almost all processes have their own log files. So we can use the said awk and all uh, combining them with these powerful regular expressions to actually find out problems uh, in all the in whatever uh, problems we face. So suppose uh, that a mail server uh, goes down due to a large number of processes being executed. So we can. We can just find them out if we, uh, we if we use them. So, the next thing is some good tutorials with which you, uh, to get started. So, for Puppet, we have this Puppet Lab. So, the Puppet Labs is a thing which found which created this Puppet. So, they have a very good documentation of how to start, uh, how to get started, how to set up. So, all these things that we explained are mentioned in much de uh, detail on uh, in these docs. Next thing is Puppet Cookbook. Uh, so this also mentions a very good way. Uh, if you don't want to get into the nitty gritties of why exactly things work uh, and just you want to get started, then this is a good tutorial for that. Then Puppet Errors Explained gives a good idea of why uh, certain errors are faced during Puppet installation. So in case you face them, you can just refer them. So it has a uh, fact of all the uh, commonly uh, faced Puppet errors. Then this is the next link. This this link is for uh, getting started with some Linux commands. Linux commands. And uh, this uh, all these are for learning the bash. bash script. OK. So I think that is, that is it. So. Is it possible for us to use Use this for uh, dual boot Windows as well as uh, the Linux. Currently, the scripts are such a way that it will um, install Linux only because the Kickstart configuration will require the hard disk to be formatted since the partition also has to be done automatically. So currently, it, dual boot is not supported by the script. Okay, sir. so one thing, we, if we manually do the partition and then uh, specify that in the script and do it, is it possible? Actually, if the kickstart is used, then the hard disk partition table has to be modified. That's how the kickstart method works. So I don't know if there is any way in which we can override this. I'll, I'll check and I'll have to check. 1125. Can I follow these? Same instructions for Fedora operating system? A puppet can be configured. Once the system is up, you can co uh, configure puppet. So uh, the puppet does not mention. So even uh, when you saw that ensuring packages are installed and all, you saw that uh, it just states ensure installed. So I said that uh, it the puppet for all, if your labs have Fedora running on them, so it just checks what is the default installation method for those uh, packages. So for Fedora, it's yum install. So it will just uh, find yum. It will just do yum install and install those uh, things. So you can very much accomplish them uh, on Fedora systems as well. But the kickstart scripts are currently created for Ubuntu installation. So it uses apt-get for installing the servers. So it might not be usable out of the box for Fedora. Some package names and the commands might vary. But but yeah, it it's doable. It should not be significantly different. I'm asking this question is sir, uh, J into Hyderabad is followed uh, some online examinations by using PostgreSQL. So at that moment they used PostgreSQL and Java. Same procedure, uh, can I, uh, today you showed Ubuntu, so can I follow the same procedure for Fedora for conducting online examinations in my college? Online examination, sir, one See, server you showed. For conducting online examination, that's actually after installing the Linux and installing the softwares, no? So. It should work pretty much the same way in Fedora and Ubuntu or whichever OS you are using. 
see uh, conducting online examinations you are using some applications so if you are installing that application properly using puppet and the base os is of, if the base os is also properly installed then it doesn't matter which os which scripts we use to install and set it up so how to write the user login script that is to display the when you enter into the system that has to display the welcome address like a welcome details username like this we need to write a we want to write a user login script how we can write it sir uh, there is some file in slash etc uh, motd that is message of the day so you can add uh, whatever that user uh, needs message so you can add a welcome that username in that file so just try with that uh, motd file 1022 uh, sir uh, what is the stable version of ubuntu so currently it's 13.04 that has been released this april but the 12.04 is the lts that that is a long term long term support for so 13.04 does not have long term support which means they have support for it only for 2 years so after 2 years uh, they won't support this system so for, if you use 12.04 which was released in april 2012 uh you will get support up to april 2016 i guess so they have a, for lts they have support of 4 years and for non lts systems they have a support of 2 years yes. sir what is the minimum hardware requirement to install the ubuntu that depends on which version you are using for uh, 12.04 i guess 1512 five, 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 mb of ram and uh, less than uh, 10 gb, 10 GB of hard disk space. less than 10 gb i guess less than 10 gb of hard disk space One two three six. Yes. Can we can we configure this puppet software in Windows? I guess we can, but uh, we we will check and let you know. Yeah, puppet is uh, can be configured on Windows as well. But here, since we have uh, only Linux machines here, so we did it on Linux machines. So, but yes, uh, you can check docs. dot puppet labs. dot com. So there they have procedures for doing doing it. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, one two five two. Sir, uh, uh, while doing network process, so the two services, Kickstart and the Puppet servers, both are required, or uh, any one is required. Uh, for installation of operating system, you need Kickstart, and after that, for uh, managing like installing softwares, like other things, you need Puppet. so for day to day activities Active. like installing softwares and all puppets is needed and for the initial installation of the operating system kickstart is needed yeah 1211 sir during the installation of puppet how to find the repository packages sir during the installation of puppet how to find the repository packages is that your question actually by default it will uh, in that repository it is ubuntu site so uh, it will install uh, will download and install the package from ubuntu repository so if you want to change like uh, you can create your own repository for your college and you you change the uh, ip in uh, slash etc apt and uh, slash sources dot list file then you will get installed by your own repository okay thanks okay thank you